Good morning again. Jim Hartz and Alan Shepard from the Mission Control Center in Houston, Texas, live this morning. Soviet More than 2,000 journalists came from all over the world to Cape Canaveral in Florida to witness the takeoff. For the very first time, the launch of the Soyuz rocket was being broadcast live from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. While the cosmonauts were on their way to the Soyuz, 9,000 kilometers away, the astronauts were having breakfast. In seven hours and 20 minutes, it would be their turn to take off. The cosmonauts took their places aboard the Soyuz and commenced their checklist, identical in all respects to the one the Americans would be using. At 5.20 p.m., Soyuz parted company with the Kazakh steppe. The moment of truth had arrived for the 460 technicians in charge of the launch phase, and indeed for all those who had been working for the last three years to ensure the mission's success. The Saturn 1B was ready for its final voyage. 600 tons divided into two stages to propel Apollo into orbit. Seven, six, At 3.50 p.m., Apollo took off from Cape Canaveral. We see Apollo lift off, inserting into orbit, and we wish good luck to further meeting. In space, you have no place to go. So that was Apollo Soyuz's big challenge. Two spacecraft coming from different places, finding a common orbit, etc., which approach each other and finally manage to join together. But it was an abnormal situation for an Earthling who always goes from one place to another, landing and returning. So this was a novelty. For 44 hours, Apollo pursued Soyuz into orbit at over 20,000 kilometers per hour. The two modules had a date on the 36th revolution. Okay, copy. This is Apollo Control. Apparently the uh, TPI maneuver was indeed successful. Houston flight to Moscow. Canaveral Soyuz got off the Kofki. Sure, the flight director and the other people here in the control center are happy to know that. Uh, I'd like you to know that uh, Apollo is go for dock also. Apollo Houston, I got two messages for you. Moscow is go for docking. Houston is go for docking. It's up to you guys. Have fun. All righty, sounds good. First, we saw Apollo's light through our porthole. We thought, we can see you, and it came nearer and nearer. I was concentrating. See, we had put the same type docking target on the Soyuz that we had on the lunar module. And so when uh, I was flying it in, uh, my main concentration was to get it exactly lined up, which I did, and at the exact velocity which you have to judge with your eye. We didn't have a laser or anything. We just had to judge it. Apollo Houston, as far as our TV picture goes, uh, it's been real good. We were in front of our screen. Everything was plugged in. If something came in our direction, I'd have to dodge it. The ship was ready. If there was an alarm, we'd move away. 
But in the end, they docked very gently. Three meters. One meter. Contact. Capture. We also have capture. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, go great to Professor of Australia. You got to Mayaki Stakovic. It was a soft duck. How we'd waited for that moment. We waited for the hatch to open. Our cameras were plugged in. We were watching them. We heard the cries of joy. We were so happy for them. The whole command center started to applaud this symbolic event when the crews from two countries met up in orbit. Before opening the hatch, the Soviets and Americans had to balance the atmospheres in the two vessels as planned. I was in mission control watching it and aware of, you know, what's going to happen. I hope it went off without a problem. The pressures were good, that the timing was good, the television would work, the voice would be transmitted. Did you want uh, panel six uh, mode device? Well, I knew that when the, I opened that hatch, I had to speak Russian as well as he spoke English. I went and I knocked on the hatch, knock, knock, knock. On the other side, I heard this knock, knock, knock. I said in Russian, Kato Buddha Tom, who's there? The hatch opened slowly. We could see the frontier between our two ships. There was a black and white ribbon marking the frontier. Tom smiled at me and held out his hand. I was right on the frontier, and we shook hands. We knew that a billion people on this earth was going to be watching us, so it had to go right. You know, for us who worked on something for five years, it was a long time. Uh, so we had been through so many subjects and so much detail to get to that point that, you know, you're just carrying this big set of decisions that you have made and choices that you've made about how this is going to work. And then when you finally get the chance to do it, it's sort of a confirmation that all those choices you made along the way were okay. Thank you very much, Alexi. Thank you. The main objective of the Apollo-Soyuz mission had been achieved. The two spacecraft had docked successfully. Some 225 kilometers away, the image of the two vessels coming together and the handshake between Alexei Leonov and Thomas Stafford was being seen all around the world. Alexei just gave me a present. Uh, you know who it is? It looks like you. Soyuz and Apollo remained docked for two days and the first international spacecraft clocked up more than six million kilometers in orbit around the Earth. Soviets and Americans visited each other, going from one craft to the other and conducting various scientific experiments together. In turn, the crews received the congratulations of their leaders. First to speak out was Leonid Brezhnev, the General Secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union sent a handwritten message to Alexei Yeliseyev. I didn't want to do it. I don't have the delivery of TV presenters. We brought in a star presenter from the Balachov era. In the name of 
the Soviet people and from myself personally, I am... Uh, we held out the letter and said, beware, each letter is important because it comes from Brezhnev. He stood to one side to read it and then told us, I can't read it and pay attention to each letter. I asked him why. He said, it's written El Brezhnev. I can't read El Brezhnev. It's either Brezhnev or Leonid Brezhnev. I had no answer. I asked my superiors for advice. Silence. I told him, say Leonid, and he read Leonid Brezhnev. New possibilities are opening up for fruitful development of scientific cooperation between countries and the peoples in the interests of, of peace and progress of all humanity. I wish you successful completion of the planned program and a safe return to Earth. Leonid Brezhnev. That's how it was at the time. The political context was... Interesting. At the White House, the message from U.S. President Gerald Ford was the same, if somewhat less formal. Admiration for your hard work, your total dedication in preparing for this first joint flight. And I'm confident that the day is not far off when space missions made possible by this first joint effort will be more or less commonplace. And may I say, in signing off, here's to a soft landing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Throughout the duration of the mission, the crew has exchanged symbolic gifts. The two mission commanders also signed a document commemorating their meeting in space. <laughs> 